Father God, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful and so thankful for another day of strength for today. We ask you to move by your mighty power, for it is in you we live, we move, and we have our being. And we're grateful in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Our teacher turned me on to this, and I'm going to share some of it with you this morning. He said, you were created to solve a problem. Um, He said, why did you buy your car? It solved a transportation problem. Mechanics solve car problems. Dentists solve teeth problems, and lawyers solve legal problems. Accountants solve tax problems. That is why God created us. God wanted a love relationship. He wanted to be chosen, pursued, and treasured. Now, Adam had a problem. He needed human companionship. And the Lord said, it is not good uh, that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken away from man made he woman and brought her to the man. Boy, I know Adam was glad. And Adam said, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man, Genesis 2, 18, 21 through 23. You see, each one of us is a solution. So when you open your eyes every morning, you're looking into an entire world crowned with solution. Every created, everything, everything created is a solution to somebody, somewhere, at some time. You are a walking solution to somebody. This means you are a reward to someone, excuse me, to somebody, somebody needs you, somebody wants you. You are uh, necessary to somebody somewhere today. Man, (laughs) praise God. (laughs) This means you are a reward to somebody, and, uh, Read these words carefully. They are powerful words. The Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou uh, camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5. God is not a respecter of person. He created just Jeremiah for a special time, season, and for a special people. It is the same with you. You were created for a specific and a very special purpose, praise God, to solve a specific problem on earth. Amen. So we got to know what God wants you to do. And the Bible says this, listen, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and thy soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet beholding unperfect, and is thy book all the all my members were written, which in countenance were fashioned, when as you yet there was none of them. Psalm 139, 14 through 16. So God is uh, totally focused on you, your ways and your assignment. The Bible says in Psalms 139 and 3, Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. God carefully examines every word you speak all day long, for there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest all together, Psalm 130, 94. He he keeps his hand upon your life. Thou hast uh, beset me behind and before, and thou hast laid thy hand upon me, Psalms 139 and 5. Praise God. Whether shall I go from thy spirit? 
or where shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Well, in your darkest, in your darkest trial of your life, and He'll turn on the light for you to enable you to complete um, what he has assigned you to do. Um, the Bible says, um, if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both uh, a light to thee, for thou hast possessed my reins, and thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Psalm 139, 11 through 13. Uh, praise God. And I'm so glad. Uh, I said, I'm so glad uh, that it's impossible uh, to count the pleasurable thoughts uh, that pour out from the mind of God uh, towards you daily. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Precious uh, also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, uh, they are more than number than the sand. When I awake, I'm still with thee. Psalms 139 and 18. Oh, yes. It is your responsibility to identify what God wants you to do. So don't expect others to define your assignment for you. It is not their responsibility to do so. They have a personal responsibility to discover their own thing. But you must discover your own assignment, what you're going to do for God. Intend, what does he intend for you to do? This will require your personal reaching and pursuing and moving toward his presence. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God Romans 14 and 12. Uh, see, the word of the Lord, I said the word of the Lord uh, is the blueprint uh, for what he wants you to do. Uh, and you must become your, it must become your daily focus. Hearing from him will make what he wants you to do clear, uh, irrefutable, and immovable. Thou hast dealt well. Uh, which I serve in, O Lord, according unto thy word. And Psalm 119 and 65. Wow, well, well, um, you're on earth um, to solve problems. Um, that's why it's called uh, an assignment. So I'm telling the Lord, and we should be saying to the Lord, I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. Yes, Lord, I pray should be. Lord, here am I. Send me. Yes, I will. I will go. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I. Send me. Yes, my Lord, and I can go in the power of your might. Yes, Lord, I can go because that's our prayer. My mind is made up and my heart is fixed to do your will, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.